21st century policing is a relentless battle against violence, drugs, robbery and organised crime. And it's our inner city cops who are in the firing line. Hands on the back of the seats now. Tonight on Brick Cops Frontline Crime... Do you want to spit in your face? ..we meet the real Sweeney. The hard men of the Met, they tackle robbers, drugs, guns, knives and thieves. And we're with the first line of attack in the war on drugs, West London's Drug Squad. As dawn breaks over London, an unmarked police car responds to an emergency call. A man is on the loose with a machete. Oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, oh, mate. This is, put the knife down, mate. When they get to the scene, it's obvious he's a danger to others and now a danger to himself. All right, mate, just put it down on the floor. He's cutting himself with a 10-inch knife. This man's just been taken down by the Met's closest thing to a SWAT team. FH male's detained. All officers safe and well over. When they get him to the ground, they discover he's got more knives on him. There's ten, including a samurai sword. All right, all right, all right, all right. You all right? You all right, mate? Can you hear me, mate? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? FH, can we just get an ambulance, please? Him on your side. He's bleeding from the mouth. OK, ambulance on him. Listen, you know you said you were at hospital. Can you reach me? It's soon discovered that the man has a history of mental health problems. As we've turned up, um, there's a gentleman sitting in the middle of the road um, on a bin, surrounded himself uh, with a barrier of bin bags. He's sitting on a large sword and uh, he's got a uh, dagger which he's trying to cut his arms at. Um, it's, it's clear he's not well, so we've, uh, basically he's been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. With London seeing over 20 knife crimes a day, any incident involving a blade is a top priority. London. With a population of nearly 8 million people, it's no surprise that more crime happens on these streets than anywhere else in the country. And the frontline defence against this scourge on society, the Hammersmith and Fulham Gun Crime and Robbery Squad. We've got a dedicated crew of dedicated officers and all dedicated in uh, combating street crime. We know the people that are committing these offences. We go out there and get in people's faces, basically, uh, disrupting a criminal activity. This is the Met Police's elite group of plain-clothed officers who patrol the streets in unmarked vehicles known as Q-cars. People that commit uh, street crime tend to be quite violent. We're not afraid to, to stop these type of people. These police are on the front line. They deal with gun and knife crime and violence every day. There's no room for mistakes. Every stop that you do, someone could have a knife on them and possibly want to want to pull it on you and try and get away rather than risk getting caught. So when they do conduct a stop and search, they always mean business. <laughs> Team leader Sergeant Andy Jessup is on a routine patrol in West London, along with partner PC Gary Dolby. Several miles away, there's a second car carrying PCs Joe Walsh and Santo Sorci. What a glorious day. It's a great day. That's all about to change. FH 199, can I have a vehicle check, please? PC Walsh runs a number plate check on the car in front of them. It's been driving erratically. It turns out the driver is wanted by police. We've got a young guy, C1 male driver, single occupancy. Uh, 
this man's wanted for questioning in connection with firearms, an allegation which is not taken lightly. Yeah, we're currently following a vehicle. It's known to have a firearms CAD attached to it. FH can show FH16 as well, please. The other Q car responds instantly. Officers Jessup and Dolby are five miles away. They put their foot on the gas and the blue lights on. They've got eight minutes to get there. While they race to the area, PCs Walsh and Sorchi covertly follow the suspect vehicle. Yeah, there's a cool Trojan. Just going to have to wave a firearm around. Yeah, FH, we're behind that vehicle now. With backup so far away, they scramble the big guns, the armed response unit. Code name, Trojan. If he gets out and starts going somewhere or things happen, Chris, we might have to get out and stop him. The problem is, they're unarmed, but the driver could be. Right, where is it now, please? Yeah, it's right, right onto Peterborough Road. Peterborough Road. That's the uh, Indian I know, about uh, two minutes away from this uh, place. When there could be a gun involved, all resources are called on. This time, it's the police chopper. Code name, India 99. Still no signal. Yeah, it's still police drop, uh, left or right. No indication currently. Trojan has been called, but they're still vital minutes away. These cops have to make sure they don't lose this suspect in the rush hour traffic. I don't think he's clocked us. No. But for how long, as their backup is still some distance away? Move, move. They're stuck in traffic. Move, move, move. Yeah, we're all ready to go. Five miles away, the drug squad are about to raid the home of a suspected drug dealer. With an explosion in the number of people using drugs in the UK, it's Londoners who are most likely to use Class A drugs like heroin and cocaine. And the elite drug squad of Hammersmith and Fulham are on the front line of the battle against these hard drugs. Should we go around the the corner? With over 20 riot officers called to assist, the police are going in hard. Three doors on, on around the corner on the right-hand side. This suspected drug dealer is in for a shock. Coming up, armed police get their man. My colleague's going to search your car for any firearms. The drug squad hit the big time. We've got a load of coke or heroin ready to go. And kids with guns. The drug squad are seconds away from a big raid. The element of surprise is key to this kind of operation. It gives the dealers no chance to ditch the drugs. One male struggling in the front room. One male Once inside the property, a man is cuffed. We've got a warrant to search the address here. Are there any drugs in the premises you want to tell me about? Nothing whatsoever. OK, thank you. Is there anything else you want to tell me about? A bit of puff. Sorry. By that you mean cannabis. Would you like to point that out to me? Tell me where that is. It's in the bedroom, where? He's admitted to some cannabis, nothing more. The officers suspect harder drugs are also hidden. Time to send in the dogs. We recovered a couple of ounces of, uh, I think, a skunk straight away. Um, but obviously just up to the dog now to make a good, good search of the premises. These drug sniffer dogs are some of the most highly trained in the country. If there's anything illegal in the building, this dog will find it in minutes. The gun and robbery squad are still tailing a car which was involved in an alleged firearms incident. The driver's unaware he's being followed. This allows the officers to guide in an armed response unit. Ten minutes have passed since the Trojan was called, and now it's taking over. Yeah, we're 
The police helicopter captures the unfolding action from the air. With an arsenal of weapons in the back of the Trojan car, their arrival normally signals the end of a pursuit. The reason why you've been stopped is that we've got information to suggest that you have put, you've waved the firearms at somebody due to your driving. Oh, a road rage incident. Which, following you, mate, doesn't seem something like you wouldn't do because you're a rubbish driver, aren't you? The suspect hasn't got a gun on him, but he's still arrested for questioning for one of the most serious crimes there is, a firearms offence. Cuffs on, he's taken back to the nick. A mile away, robbery squad officers Chris Hockenhull and Simon Gardner are in a queue car. They're responding to another report of a gun, this time in the hands of a group of youths. It's clear the youths involved are only kids. The officers soon establish that the weapon is a pellet gun. Whose is the, uh, the BB gun then? The little one. The little one. Did you find it out onto the street or anything? No, no, just last lot. Just been firing between yourself? Yeah, yeah, just last lot. Where did you get it from? Some market in Shepherd's Bush. How much was it? It's amazing what people sell them, isn't it? With the situation under control, PC Gardner makes sure they learn from this experience. You didn't know that it would be, it might be a bit dodgy to play around with a gun in the street. This is still a public area. Just have a bit more common sense, all right? You might not get in a... Any time you take a gun out of the house, even a plastic one, a bit risky, all right? And for the gun's owner, he's lucky it's only home to mum. Get your mum to come to the door for me. Hi. I told you. Yeah, someone's found out a bit worried because it's not I knew that, I'd that dissimilar from yeah. real because it's black. We're going to get rid of the gun, if you don't <laughs> yeah. mind. Take it easy. This time it was only a toy gun, but these officers know only too well how serious it could have been. I reckon you could rob someone with that at night, couldn't you? Quite easily. At the drugs raid, the search continues and the sniffer dog's having a field day. Could you, you'd be able to steal a glass cabinet for you out of a bit, yeah? Do you pay at all? Uh, well, I mean, that's probably, I mean, that's probably where all yeah. that stuff yeah. is still. Yeah. Well, stand up, there's another seat you outside, it's a bit fresh out there as well, isn't it? The dog's job is done. He's found a substantial amount of drugs. The early indications are that we've actually hit the jackpot at this address. In the, uh, in the front room, there's a small chest of drawers, um, and it would appear where he, this is where he keeps all of his cutting gear and there's uh, evidence of cannabis resin in there. When you go into the bedroom, the dog has indicated uh, a big bag containing quite a lot of skunk and two slabs of cannabis resin. And also down beside the bed, we've got a load of drawers of what appear to be coke or heroin ready to go. So it's all looking very good at the moment. The cops make even more sinister discoveries inside the house. As you can see, these are two samurai swords that we found inside the address beside uh, the chap's bed. And this is an indication of the sort of people that we're dealing with. As you can see there, it's quite a nasty uh, samurai sword. And this is exactly why we bring the TSG along with us to make these rapid entries, because we never know what's behind the door. Undercover cop Paul Jackson is over the moon. Altogether, a seizure of, uh, of Class A and Class C uh, drugs inside the premises, a seizure of cash, uh, proceeds and assets of his uh, involvement to the supply of Class A controlled drugs. All in all, it's been a, an excellent result for our team. It's a good seizure for drugs. Really, really pleased. Drugs are a massive problem for inner city cops, but this haul, at least, will never hit the streets.
robbery squad officers, PCs Will Pipichet and Michael Payne, are out on patrol looking for trouble. And it's not long before one of them spots some. Recognise him? Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey recognises chap on the pavement here with a yellow hat. Let's see if we can stop him and have a word. With the pleaters zero tolerance on drugs, this squad's MO is to hassle the usual suspects. Even though you search for drugs, mate, keep your hands out your pockets. They're an alpha drug. I know you carry drugs and deal drugs. Got anything on you, Shanev? No, man. Got yeah. anything sharp on you? No, man. Got nothing sharp, no? No, What's that then? Cheers. I drink, bro. Don't you think you should tell someone you've got a crack pipe in your pocket? No, I ain't got a crack pipe. What's that then? It's a crack Weed pipe. Bro. This man's lied. He's got a broken bottle in his pocket. Can I say you've got anything sharp on you? You say no, and I'll put my hand in your pocket. You got a broken crack pipe in you? No, there's no crack on that. Bro. Yeah, it's the fact it's a broken glass, isn't it? Yeah. Broken yeah. glass. Yeah, I was about to throw it. My name check on the stop. Ask your road police. They check to see if the man's got any outstanding warrants. You're not wanted at the moment. If I was wanted, you reckon I'll stay here for you? Or do you reckon you'll have to work for me? Probably have to work for me money. I'll probably get paid, though, won't I? And this wannabe rapper sees this as an opportunity for some promotion. 666, that I didn't know what for the beast. We have to drop Babylon and make it try to the east. Oh, wow. Make them know that. The chat we just stopped, he's a drug user and a drug dealer. He's been arrested by myself and my colleagues several times. And we saw him walking down the road when he saw us. He instantly started looking away, hands in his pockets, very nervous. So we stopped him, but, um, lovely individual he was. Half a mile away and another Q car unit is responding to an alleged mobile phone theft. Young lad's called his mum, saying that he's been robbed, um, just round the corner from where we are now. This is exactly the kind of incident the robbery squad was created to handle. Already, street thefts in the Hammersmith and Fulham borough are down by 33% in the last year. Officer, please. Hey, take the camera off me, please, man. Shut up. The suspect is on the ground already cuffed and in possession of the victim's mobile phone. The police want to get to the bottom of it. Well, let me explain myself to you. My brother just got robbed over here. Right. I asked the little kid, if you think I'm down, I beg you just call the kid, please, for one right. second. I asked the little kid, do you know, bro? He just got robbed. He goes to me, I don't know, I go to him, can I hold your phone for one second? He started to shake. I go to him, I'm not going to hurt you, I'm not going to touch you. Then oh, he ran off. Oh, oh. I know you call him, I swear to God, I'm not lying to you. I'm a very rich guy. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at the moment. At the moment, you're under okay. suspicion of robbery. It's the first time in my life has ever happened to me. You can check that front. Oh, no, the, uh, boy. Um, the officers aren't buying his story, so he's thoroughly searched. What are you running for then? Yeah. But I, don't, I, don't, I just got scared, to be honest with you. You're scared of what? Yeah, you guys. Well, if your brother's just been robbed, as you say I, it, yeah, listen, yeah. listen to me. Why don't you stop and speak to my colleague rather than running away because from I knew what I just done was stupid. I knew, for, I knew what I done was stupid. And what have I'm you just done? Me. That little kid. Yeah, you still got his phone? Yeah, there's his phone there. Right. His phone there. Even though the suspect was in possession of the kid's mobile phone, he still won't come clean. If you ask him, he goes to me, keep the phone, he just ran off. Why did he turn it off then? He, the kid ran off. The Why did you turn the phone off? Where's his SIM card? Where's his SIM card? I swear to God, I don't Where's know. Where's your SIM card? Where, Where did you drop it? Where? Where? Over down there. Whereabouts? Before I saw you after? Right now, when you guys saw me, I got scared. When we first saw you, you yeah, did yeah, yeah. Come on, show me where you took it. Into your the suspect has ditched the phone's SIM card. You can show us where you chucked it. OK, I don't mind, I'll show you. I dashed it, so. Where about you fucking chuck it then? Pardon? Where about you chuck it? Uh, I'm running over there. Got it? Over there. No, I dashed it, I dashed it from over there. Here. I've got someone on the inside of the estate. He's run away from us. He's been detained. He's got the phone on him that's been taken in the robbery. Subsequently been arrested. He has, however, given a very different version of events, which we don't believe one second. He claims he's thrown the SIM card out of the phone somewhere around here. Chris is just speaking with the, the victim of the robbery. He's confirmed the description with me, which matches the young lad who's been arrested on suspicion of robbery. He's confirmed that he's had his mobile phone st stolen by force. He was in fear that he was going to be robbed. And uh, colleagues have seen him. He's made off. He's uh, been duly arrested. As yet, there's no SIM card and no confession. It's mine. Be so intimidated. It's robbery. 
can't just go around taking photos of little kids. I swear to you, it's not, there's nothing like that though. If you're, you're trying to get look, look. Bottom line, listen, right. listen, 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 listen. Right, yeah. Bottom line is, you're under arrest, right, you're right. getting interviewed. Oh, fair enough. So I don't want to hear any more now. Okay, listen, okay, I'm not blaming you. But you, you, you keep so saying I robbed the kids. What about my cousin? I'm not bothered now. I'm not bothered. You're going to get interviewed. You're under arrest, you're going to get interviewed. Sort it out then, all right? After the break, to catch a thief. Coming down hard on domestic violence. Make some digital arrested. And cops make an extraordinary discovery. It's not even funny, man. It's not even must to say anything, but man, we can North Hammersmith, and the officers are still dealing with the suspect of an alleged mobile phone mugging. And now he's trying some flattery. I like you, man. You're a bit of a, bit of a good officer, man. They're just taking the piss. I'll list you. Hey? I'm t like, they're taking the piss. But it won't get him anywhere. Listen, we're not taking a piss. Everybody yeah, gets uh, handcuffed at the moment. It's not like the old days or anything like that, all right? <laughs> Basically, when he was detained on the floor, I said to him, where's the phone? And he immediately stated that the phone's in his pocket. Um, he's admitted to throwing a SIM card away, even though he said he's just borrowed the phone because his brother's been robbed, which he meant it was cousin, which doesn't make sense. Because the suspect is a juvenile, the police will have to call his parents. Hey, officer, I beg you for my mum, please. She's going to be worried sick, please. Well, we'll, we'll go and tell your mum. OK, thanks. Okay. I beg you just don't do that search thing in my house. Yeah, but the thing is, you've got to look at it from our point of view. You've just been arrested for robbery, but I'm going to speak to the governor, and if he says he gives me the power to come and search your room, it's fair bit. Well, and it's the same time we can speak to your mum. I beg you, please don't tell my mum about the cigarettes. The cigarettes? Yeah, please don't tell I think she's going to be more worried the fact that you've been arrested for robbery. Yeah, but I beg you just don't say nothing about the cigarettes, man. 16 years of old, and he's more worried at the moment about his parents find out that he smokes as opposed to the actual fact that he's been arrested for a robbery. Back to the station to be booked in. I've just been to show the victim the mobile phone and he's confirmed it. it is his phone and it's the one that he had stolen. There's a special number on the back called an IMAI number, which is uh, unique to that phone. For the first time, this suspect is lost for words. The robbery squad are responding to a call. There's been a sighting of a man who's been wanted by police for over a month. He skipped bail after being charged with a string of muggings. The likelihood of this man not coming quietly means there's a full show of force. As four officers take the front of the property, another four head round the back. The suspect was supposed to appear before magistrates weeks ago. He failed to show up in court. There's now a warrant for his arrest. As someone answers the front door... Hello, police officers. Somebody else tries to leave by the back door. Straight into the arms of waiting officers. You're under arrest on suspicion of robbery. Times three. Robbery four. Robbery one. To add to this man's problems, he's also found to be carrying drugs. Robbery, please. No bit of cannabis. If they're arrested as well for in possession of cannabis. I ain't got no cannabis. Stand up. Stand up, all right? Stand me back to the wall. He has an extensive criminal record. Yeah, you can have a drink. Yeah, he has an excuse for heading out the back door. Giving you the chance to drag yourself into the police station, we've been telling you. That's what I was going to do right after. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Is that where you were making your way out to the police station now, was it? Yeah. 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 Is that where you started attacking the officers? That's why he came running at us. Yeah. We'll give you a lift, it's all right. We've had dealings with this male before, so we know uh, that he uh, is violent and then that he does run from police and that he will attempt to escape. So myself and uh, Jeffrey went round the back, and sure enough, uh, when the officers knocked on the front of the door, uh, he's come running out of the back. He has got previous for dealing drugs as well. 
Uh, there's other bits of cannabis in there, uh, Wayne scales, so it looks like he was doing a bit of drug dealing on the side as well. Last year, the robbery squad made nearly a thousand arrests for theft. And the suspects don't always play ball. Don't put your hand on me, get your hand off me. Go, go, go get some fucking guy from your brain that you prick. Why are you following me for I'm going to myself? Come on, go and don't push me, did I push you? Don't push me. Don't push me. Why are you pushing me for? Why are you pushing me? I'm getting in my fucking soul. Stop pushing me, innit? Their life's been charged with uh, a number of offences and he'll be uh, kept in custody to be put before the court tomorrow. He's um, extremely unhappy about uh, being charged and uh, refused to go back in his cell, so he's forcibly uh, put back in his cell. You can see that's the type of person that uh, goes out and robs uh, schoolboys. The robbery squad at Hammersmith have worked very hard trying to find this guy and uh, put him before the court. He uh, managed to evade us for the past month. We had some intelligence yesterday to suggest where he was. We acted upon that intelligence and uh, arrested him. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Police are searching for the man who allegedly did this to his partner in front of his young son. The weapon, his neck chain. The team are also looking for his brother, a known drug dealer. When it comes to domestic violence, the cops don't mess about. They want his neck chain as evidence. The tactical support group never go in lightly and even have medical personnel on standby just in case. For the police, they never know what's behind the door. Within seconds, the officers secure the premises and its occupants. Sorry, two males, one female, two kids. Main subject being arrested. They've got their man, but can't find the neck chain that it's claimed he used in the alleged assault. But the cops have a lead, so it's on to a second address. Robbery squad officers Andy Jessup and Rich Hargate spot a car full of men being driven erratically. He stopped a few times. And, um, there was a, a check on the car flashes up a previous drugs offence. Right, stop it here, mate. <laughs> From. With 23 years of policing between them, experience has taught these officers that frantic movements in the suspect car means they could be hiding something. Hands on the back of the seats now. Yes, on the back of the seats. Do. Hands there. Keep hands out your pockets. PC Jessup bombards the suspect with questions. You got your drugs on you? Aye. You got your drugs on you? Are you taking any drugs today? No. No? A tactic used to catch out the most seasoned liars. Keep your hands out of your pockets. You've been taking drugs, haven't you? Somebody in the car's been taking drugs. For that purpose, you're all going to be searched for drugs. What drugs have you got on you? Nothing, sir. Nothing at all? What drugs have you taken? Nothing. Nothing at all? Stand away from the fence. Who are all your friends in the car? With five men to deal with, a second Q car has arrived to assist. You'll be searched for drugs, understand? No drugs, but they find a plastic bag in the boot containing a number of mobile phones. The driver denies the bag is his. He claims it belongs to his mate. What's his surname? I don't know. I think you don't know his surname? You don't know his surname? He knows him as well. He lives in Hansdorf. I don't know where about. Yeah. He knows him as well, does he? Yeah. The guy that put the bag in the. That See the how that plate. Stop talking to. Him. All right. He's saying you put the bag in there. He looks a bit 
suspicious, doesn't it? My mate there is searching the car. He said, whose bag is it? I said to you, whose bag is it? You said, point out the black geezers. And he said, oh, no, it's not mine, it's not mine. So that would make us suspicious to what the contents are and why he doesn't want us to believe it's this bag. All I know is I've seen with a bag, yeah. Who have you seen with a bag? Put, him, yeah, him, right. He came with the bag, he left it there, you know what I mean? I Who put it in the boot? He goes, can I, put the, can I leave the bag in the boot? Him? Yeah. Right, cool. Come and stand over here. Been oh, why are you telling me that? One second. Did I put in the car? Well, he has done your back. It's not even funny, my car. It's not even my stuff. You don't have to say anything, but man, we defend. You don't make a mistake. Stay still. Stay still. Listen, did I put in the car? Stay still. Stay still. I didn't put in the car. The other guy put in the car. Why are you still talking? Is it because of him? You're under arrest now. You're under arrest, all right? Yeah, but why? It's 2055 hours, right? You're under arrest. Well, I'll have to do checks on it and uh, do it back in the nick, I think. Yeah. It's my eyes, isn't it? It looks like there's a lot of stolen property. There's some mobile phones and some other sort of phone SIM cards. There's some uh, doubt as to where they come from. More eyebrows are raised when a batch of memory cards are found in the driver's pocket. Where are they from? They're for the phones. Yeah. Two gig. Yeah. Yeah, that's where what's that, 15 it? quid each? Oh, and they're the same kind as the ones in the bag. Where are these from? I got them off him. From my off phone. who? From my phone, him. Did you pay for them? Where did he get them? You don't know? I suspect they to be stolen, all right? So at the moment, you're under arrest and suspicion of no, abandoning stolen goods. Put your hands behind your back. Cheers. Can you do that, Craig? Cheers. He had these in his pocket. And he's got, there's a box full of them. We believe he's got stolen um, property on him, i.e. Uh, the small little um, memory cards that go in mobile phones. Um, we found some in the car that link to the other property that was found in the car. Um, that he's got a couple on him, so handling stolen goods at the moment. They're not mine, officer. Bearing in mind, somebody just told me that you gave them to him. Swear on my mum's life. I think what's this? The police are raiding a second property on their hunt for a neck chain allegedly used in a vicious domestic assault. They already have a suspect in custody, but think that the alleged weapon could be here. With so many warrant officers, there's bound to be a backlog on the stairs. Inside, they find the suspect's brother, a known drug dealer. A quick search, and they find what they're looking for, and more. The large chain link necklace, which is the object of the search. Also see a small quantity of herbal cannabis, small quantity of what we believe to be Class A drugs. For PC Dan Mourned, this raid was about one thing. Today's operation is also about sending a message to perpetrators of domestic violence across Hammersmith and Fulham, and that is that if you do commit domestic violence offences, and then you do not stick to the conditions that are set down for on you by the court, then we're going to come and get you. At Shepherd's Bush Police Station, PC Jackson shows off evidence seized from a recent raid. We uh, recovered a, a samurai sword. But you can see, obviously, with the, the, the current trend with knife crime and people carrying weapons, that uh, obviously this is the sort of stuff we have to come across on day-to-day on, uh, -day raids. Um, obviously, it's a quite... Uh, Nasty weapon. I mean, it could be um, ceremonial, but as you can see, it's still making a nasty mess. A quick tour of the station storeroom reveals what the police are up against. We'll just show what uh, we've seized over the last. Uh, how long, Tony? Uh, this is this is six. This is uh, three to four months. Last three to four months, we've police have seized these number of weapons. Um, as you can see, uh, a selection of samurai swords. You've got a selection of machetes, hatchets. Uh, knives, other implements that could be used against, you know, victims of crime, members of the public or even the police. Still to come, more revelations when the SIM card thieves strip. Why have you got a phone down your pants? And a spitting burglar. Do you want to spit in your face? No, because you can spit yeah. in your face.
Back at Hammersmith Police Station, it's booking in time for the men arrested for stealing mobile phone accessories. And one of them has a request. Please try and deal with me quick. Why? Because I have to go with my friend's birthday. If you can, no. Is it that important, is it, your friend's birthday? I don't believe you. I've been doing this job 10 years. I need to have fun on these days, no other reason. So it's really rightly important that you get out of custody as soon as possible to visit your friend's birthday. It's not important, I'm also, I'm begging you, tell me please. The only place this man's going is for a strip search. What have you got? What have you got? A phone. One you got a phone down your pants. Yeah. There's no, no drugs, no nothing, just a phone. It doesn't look good that you got a phone down your pants though, does it? Have you had any cannabis down your pants? I can smell cannabis from somewhere. You got, you got drugs down your pants? No, no, no. Drop your shorts. All the way down. down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. See, why are you lying to us? What's the point of lying to us? I want to smoke it, that's right. Well, we, you know we're going to find it. You're in a cell, you're going to take all your clothes off. <coughs> we're going to find it, you idiot. Right, well, you're also under arrest for possession of cannabis. He had a mobile phone and some cannabis down his pants, where everybody keeps theirs. That's put paid to him making his friend's birthday bash. You're not in a writ, all right? We'll come talk to you in a little while. Now it's his mate's turn. I'm going to authorise a strict search. And the reason for that is because I'm aware that your friend was, in fact, found with further belief stolen goods down his pants. Can you take him to cell number 13, please? Yeah, not idea. No. What number? 13, 13. Pull your arms cheeks apart and bend down. OK, get yourself dressed, on. Luckily for him, a cavity search reveals nothing. But he's got some explaining to do about the suspect bag. The robbery squad are on a call for a violent man wanted for a series of burglaries. We'll go round there with the assistance of the other two cars. He, he does know he's wanted and he's uh, quite surveillance aware, so we'll park up round the corner just until everybody's ready. The last time they arrested him, he put up a fight. He basically knows he's in a lot of trouble and he knows he'll be doing a stretch, so he will do anything he can to escape. This time, six officers are involved. I think it's M2 flats here, middle. As two officers stake out the back of the flats, four officers tiptoe to the flat door. But there's no answer and no movement inside. So, on to the next address. Go on, Captain. As they make their way there, the victim of the burglary has phoned the station for an update. Have you not been asked to do anything to do with the burglary this evening at all? Just on that, we're just about to go and make an arrest inquiry. Hey, the young lady's rung up. Kathy, if you just explain so we are trying to still locate him. We're going to try and nick him in the next five to ten minutes. Yeah, that's all I see. Thank you. The robbery unit takes pride in their swift response to serious incidents. It's going to be here, isn't it? The address is well known to police for all the wrong reasons. Well, what's the problem? What's the problem? So, what are you watching going in my house for then? Oh! Oh! Move that fucking house! Yeah, move it from my house! A result. The suspect is here. Even though he comes quietly, his hosts are not so friendly. Things quickly change when PC Pullen reads the man his rights. You're under arrest for attempted burglary. Do not burglary? Yeah, attempted burglary. Do you have to say anything? No, 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 Still makes you wear questions. Some flat no, line. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Burglary. Do you understand? No, I do. All right. Okay. I'm not too uh, keen on police that address. And, uh, he's been arrested for burglary. He'll be taken back to Hammersmith, be interviewed in the morning because he's had a beer, and uh, he'll be handed over to the burglary squad in the morning for him to deal with. This man has no intention of coming quietly. You're going to have to rough me up, yeah? Oh, you're going to either... Don't muck around, just walk up to the van. 
burglar. You want a burglar? Burglar. Yeah. Do you want to spit in your face? No, because if you spit yeah. in your face. Wait, everyone's watching. Oh, are you watching this? With the risk of spreading diseases, when a suspect threatens to spit in an officer's face, it's serious. Right, Tell listen, Mum, listen. Tell Mum. Chill out. When you threaten to spit in a police officer's face, we're not going to take any chances, all right? OK? Now, just calm down. You remain calm. I'll take you into the van. You threaten to spit in my colleague's yeah, face, all right? right? Be careful. Oh, just go on your knees, then. Up you go. Keep your head down. Yeah? Keep my head down. down. My head down. Keep it down. An angry mob starts to form. You guys didn't see it. You didn't see what happened. Right, when we put you in the van, stay yeah, facing the van. Stay facing the van, all right? That's not doing nothing to me. Should we go? Go. Yeah, yeah. Hey? Shouldn't go around burgling then, should you? Oh, yeah, he's good. Hey? <laughs> Due to the notoriety of the man, the whole team head back to Hammersmith Nick to book him in. He's known to be very violent. He is known for firearms as well. That address that he's outside of, there's no way in God's earth he'd be able to just walk in to that address. That's a very, very well-known address. A borough associated with firearms and supply of drugs. Um, he threatens to spit in your face and he threatens to go for you. Generally, he, he means it and he'll kick off, and what he's trying to do is instigate a conflict so that everyone gets involved. Back at the station, the suspect is still causing trouble. If you're, gonna, if you're not going to cooperate, well, put me in the cell. To the side. No, because I don't want that to hang on for now. No, I want to go in the cells. All right. All right. All right. All right. What you need to do now no, is focus on me. All right. Okay. You yeah. and I, we're going to deal with all each other now. All right. All right. Can I please go in the cells? Not at the moment. Because I'm hurting, yeah? Okay. Either take the cuffs off and I'll cooperate, or off. Take, put me in the cells. Yeah, come off, come Either take, down. Well, I'll go in the cells and I'll come down later, yeah? yeah. Either take the cuffs yeah. off yeah. And, I'll, and I'll cooperate, or put me in the cells. For once, the police listen to the suspect and put him in the cell. But he still wants everyone's attention. I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. I ain't coming after any of you. I swear it. Yeah? All right. You assholes, man. Yeah? Is this what you do for a living, yeah? Oh, take it. What do you do for a living, eh? What do you do for a living? Nothing. No, well, maybe you should get yourself a job then. Yeah? He's not interested in career advice, but he is interested in making threats. You know I've got pants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mate. That's why you go around smashing windows, isn't it? Yeah. This suspect has got enough attention for one night. Coming up soon on Brit Cops Frontline Crime, the new police action series exclusive to Bravo. Meet Britain's hardest SWAT teams on the trail of drugs and violence. The real Sweeney comes to London with the tough-talking, no-nonsense coppers from the Met. And Frontline Police deal with hardcore crime in Wales. Bravo's cameras capture all the action as these cops catch the criminals.